السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بعد أن نقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى ألف لامين أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون وعن عبد الله بن سلام رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أيها الناس أفشوا السلام وأطعموا الطعام وصلوا الأرحام وصلوا بالليل والناس نيام تذكرون الجنة دار السلام أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Honorable scholars, respected brothers and elders We begin in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Indeed to Allah belongs all praise Thereafter, we send salutations and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa taslim, upon his family, his household, his companions. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us goodness and khayr. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open doors of success and goodness upon everyone. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give cure to those who are sick. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate the pain of those who are suffering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive of those who have passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way, shape or form, humanity by and large is suffering across the globe, namely the Muslims in India or China, across the globe, humanity that is suffering, and namely the Muslims that are suffering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate the pain of everyone and anyone, anyone suffering across the globe. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Beloved brothers and elders, the time we have is very short. SubhanAllah, we have about eight, nine minutes, mashaAllah, tabarakallah. And there are so many ideas I had I wanted to share, subhanAllah, but to be very frank and honest, the time does not permit so let me try, inshallah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inspire me with the right thing to say, which firstly means brings, uh, becomes a means of benefit to myself, and thereafter, inshallah, becomes a source of inspiration and benefit to all of you. The first thing I want to practice the discussion with, before even going into the discussion, is one particular hadith of Jami'a Tirmidhi, or Sunan Tirmidhi. And it's a hadith that, subhanAllah, I try to share time and again as a very important reminder. And subhanAllah, it's something you can leave from this discussion, from this lecture, from this khutbah, uh, with practical, practical implications and application, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. The hadith of Sahih uh, Jami'a Tirmidhi, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was as he taught the Sahaba, the benefit of sending salutations unto him. And on the day of Friday, the benefit and the barakah of sending salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's take a moment, all of us collectively, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد One companion came and said يا رسول الله We understand the etiquette of making dua is we need to commence the dua by praising Allah as much as we can Thereafter we send salutations on Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم as much as we can and there we after, then after we ask for our needs and our hajat and whatever our supplications may be. So the companion came, Ya Rasulullah, كم أجعل من دعاء صلاة عليه Ya Rasulullah, how much of my dua, of my supplication should I allocate in sending salawat onto you, salutations onto you? A rubber, one quarter of the time I spend making dua, should I send salutations on you? The remainder I, I use asking for my needs. The Prophet ﷺ said, one quarter is good, if you do more it's better. He said, subhanAllah, half. He said, half is good if you do more, it's better. Three quarters, if three quarters is good, if you do more, it's better. He said, Ya Rasulullah, أَجْعَلُ الْدُعَاءِ كُلُّهُ صَلَاةً عَلِكَ Ya Rasulullah, should I spend the entire time I've allocated to make dua, just sending salutations on to you? Now this, this is very important. Every one of us should have in our daily schedule, daily routine, 
a time that is allocated making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we say munajat ma'Allah. You know, people have pleasure and joy speaking to certain people, friends, acquaintances, spouse, whatever it may be. We need to have that intimate moment in our daily lives where we speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, should I spend the whole time making dua like this in my whole du'as and salutation when we are Rasulullah? Now look at the practical barakah and blessing of this. And inshallah, you go home with this, at least hadith, you go home with this. And alhamdulillah, we are, we've accomplished more than enough. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa responded to this uh, companion saying, if you do this, i.e. if you spend the entire time, instead of making dua, asking for your needs, just sending salutations on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the barakah of that will be what? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, wa dhambuk. Allah Akbar. You know how amazing is this hadith? What, what do we need in life? We want our needs to be fulfilled. We need, the, we need our needs to be fulfilled. What do we need the hereafter? We need our sins to be forgiven. The Prophet sallallahu said, the barakah of the root, salawat on the Prophet sallallahu is so powerful. He said, even tukfa hammak. Allah will take care of your needs and Allah will forgive your sins. Allah will forgive you, Allah will take care of your hajat. Who knows your hajat, my hajat, my needs, your needs, better than we know our own needs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah will take care of your needs and Allah will forgive your sins. In that pain, he looks at Fatima, his beloved daughter, and said, 
My daughter, Allah qarba ala abiki ba'd al yawm. After today, there will be no hardship on your father. There will be no difficulty on, the, on your father. And then the Prophet passed away. Allahumma, Allahumma raqeet al-a'lahi, you know, decided to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he sang those couplets. Ya abata ajaba rabban da'a. Ya abata ila jibreel an an'a. Ya abata jannat al-firdawsi ma'wa. Oh, my beloved father. Ila Jibreel, Ya Abad, Ajab Rabbad, you respond to the call of Allah. Oh my beloved father, we tell Jibreel of your demise. Oh my beloved father, Jannah to Firdaus is being prepared and adorned for you. Now what I'm trying to say over here, my beloved brothers and elders, SubhanAllah, the first thing we need is we thank Allah for the afiyah he's given us. Alhamdulillah illadhi aafana min mabtalahum bi. Alhamdulillah illadhi aafana min mabtalahum bi. This should be on our tongues. All praise belongs to Allah who gave us afiyah from the hardships of these people, whatever they're being put through, they're being put through, subhanAllah. Number two, everything is predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you know, we need to subhanAllah not become despondent, not lose hope. Yaqub alayhi salam tells his sons, after losing three children, La tayasu min My brothers, in these trying times, attach your hearts to the Holy Quran. Attach your hearts to the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran is what's going to mend what's broken in this, in, you know, in these chests. These broken hearts. Open the Quran and read the Quran. And I will quickly go through it. Later on in his life, he had lost his eyesight. He had become 
blind, subhanAllah. And he was known from those companions who were mustajab and dua. Whenever they made dua, Allah accepted their dua. There was a particular athar of his. He said, eat halal and tayyib. Eat that which is 100% halal, your du'as will be accepted. So in his du'as, he was mustajab and dua. He came to Makkah, later on in his life he was blind. People came in their hundreds, thousands, so many people came. You know, oh, Sa'ad has made dua for us like this. We need this, we need this. Young boy, Abdullah ibn Sa'ad is watching him. He says, SubhanAllah, how strange is this? How ironic is this? Whenever he makes dua, his dua is accepted. And he himself yet is blind. So logically, why does he make dua for himself? That Allah restore for him his eyesight. SubhanAllah. So he comes to him. And proposes the question. He said, My uncle Sa'ad said, I introduced myself. He said, Recognize my voice. And then I said, I have a question. He says, What's your question asked? So he said, He said, My honorable uncle Sa'ad, why? You make dua for so many people and your dua is accepted. Why don't you make dua to Allah? Allah return to you your eyesight. Your eyesight, you're blind. Why don't you just make dua for yourself? You know, SubhanAllah. Yeah, they, this, just res, listen to the response he gives. There, there's nothing wrong for asking, uh, in asking Allah for afiyah. My car breaks, I'm immediately making dua, Ya Allah, fix my car. Ya Allah, I have this problem, I have that problem. But there is a level of iman these people reach. You know, hasanat wal abrar, sayyat wal muqarrabin, those who study, they know. Right? There's a level he reached, subhanAllah. So he says to the young boy, Abdullah ibn Sa'i, he says to him, he says, Qadaullahi, my son, Abdullah, listen to me carefully. Abdullah, you're telling me make God in my eyesight. I understand what you're saying. But to me, the decree of Allah is more pleasing to me than even having my eyes given back to me. I want to have my eyes, my vision. Allah chose to keep me blind. It brings me more pleasure to stay blind than to rather be given my eyesight back to me. Now imagine approaching every adversity in life like this. This is the decree of Allah. And Allah loves you more than your mother can love you. Allah loves you more than you can love yourself, subhanAllah. Allah loves you. Allah loves you. Allah is most merciful towards you. So when adversities come, you're in the, this is in the hands of Allah. Allah oversees you. You know, your ship will not sink. Alhamdulillah, you're in good hands. Learn rather than complaining, be thankful to Allah. Count the blessings we have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us grateful for the blessings He's bestowed upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the Muslims who are suffering in any way, shape, or form. In India, subhanAllah, what's happening? We should know what's happening. We should make dua for them. Uh, every day, Fajr, Salat al Fajr, we have Qunut. SubhanAllah. May Allah make it easy for them. The Muslims in China, may Allah make it easy for them. In this correlation, we think that the virus came because of this. You know, from a theological standpoint, we, should, we shouldn't make these types of correlations. We make dua to Allah for Afiyah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the good that Rasulullah asked for and protect us from everything Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sought the protection of Allah in. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa barakatuh. Sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.